Today's lesson is about reproduction and development. So reproduction, as we've already figured out, is a process where new organisms are produced from existing organisms. This is breeding. This is having babies. Well, this process can actually occur in one of two ways. There's asexual reproduction, which we've kind of already talked about. I'll explain why later. And there's also sexual reproduction. Now, what you're supposed to learn from this video is different types of sexual and asexual reproduction, and more importantly, the difference between the two of them. Why is one better than other in some cases? And we're going to start with asexual reproduction. Some of the important aspects of asexual reproduction are, number one, there's only one parent. One organism can reproduce itself without help from any others. But when it does this, the offspring are exactly the same as the parent. The offspring have 100% the same chromosomes as the parent. So we can say that the offspring are actually clones. That's what a clone is, an exact copy of the parent, the same genetic material. This happens mostly with unicellular organisms. That means like little one-celled organisms. The more simple an object is, the more simple an organism is, the more likely it is to be able to reproduce asexually. Now, you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, is it when mitosis undergoes cellular division here, we make two exact daughter cells from the same parent cell? Isn't that asexual reproduction? Yes, it is. The simplest form of asexual reproduction is mitosis, where we start off with only one parent, and we end up with two identical offspring. Now, we're going to talk about different forms of asexual reproduction, and we're going to start getting more and more complicated as it goes on. The first type of asexual reproduction, besides mitosis, would be binary fission. Now, when a cell, like an onion root cell or a skin cell, when that undergoes reproduction, we call that mitosis, because those guys are eukaryotic cells with a nucleus. Binary fission is almost the same process, but it occurs in bacteria and algae, things of that sort. Also, protists are other types of one cellular organisms. These guys are different from mitosis simply because they don't have a nucleus. They are prokaryotic cells. And therefore, you can't have the regular stage of the spindle being formed around the nucleus. But these guys divide basically in the same way. The DNA replicates, the various organelles in the organism are copied, and then the organism splits in two. That's where binary fission comes from. Binary means two, fission means breaking apart. So these simple organisms, like these guys here, they simply split in two after they replicate their DNA. Very similar to mitosis. A slightly more complex form of asexual reproduction is what's known as budding. And what actually happens here in multicellular organisms, and the best one to look at, is this thing called a hydra. It's a multicellular organism with these little tentacles up on top. And that'll go through a process called budding, where a new individual actually develops from an outgrowth of the parent. In other words, there's the organism, it starts making this little growth here, and this little growth turns into, turns into a copy of the actual hydra, and this guy eventually just pops off, lands next to it, and starts growing independently. So here's a quick video of what a hydra looks like and what it does. This is a hydra, a microscopically small animal that lives in freshwater ponds and damp places. The hydra is a simple animal with a tubular body and tentacles that it uses to catch small prey. This is a hydra, a microscopically small animal that lives in... A hydra does not need a mate to reproduce. It can reproduce by itself. When a single animal reproduces by itself, it is called asexual reproduction. Asexual means without sex. 
The hydra reproduces by growing a young hydra from its side. The new hydra will separate from its parents and continue to live on its own. It will be an almost exact copy of its parents. Asexual means without sex. The hydra reproduces by growing a young hydra from its side. Another form of asexual reproduction is what's called regeneration. In this case, regeneration is going to occur when part of the organism is cut off and the organism can grow a new part. One of the most obvious ones, of course, is starfish. If you cut off the arm of a starfish, the starfish grows its arm back. But in some organisms, cutting off the arm of the starfish can actually cause that cut arm, the cut off arm, to regrow a whole new starfish, which is what you've got going on here. That's the original arm, and it regenerated an entire new starfish. So now we have two separate organisms. And you can see this is a, um, an organism called a newt, and we've, uh, the arm was cut off, and it eventually regenerates the arm. But in this case, we're actually recreating a whole second organism from one part of the organism. An extreme version of this is what's called fragmentation. And there are some organisms that you can break it into parts, and each individual part will grow into a new organism. One of the most common forms of these are what are called the flatworms or platyhelminthes. That's it right there. That's the flatworm. You can see it's got uh, a head, it's got these two light-sensing eye sockets and a few other parts. And if you take this guy and you cut him in different parts, and here we have a diagram where we're cutting him here and here, three pieces, all three pieces will actually regenerate all new organisms. So one organism gave birth to three organisms all by itself. There's your asexual reproduction. This is a longer video showing what happens when you cut up one of these flatworms, one of these planarian. And I'm going to skip around to show you the different parts instead of watching all four minutes of it. So that's the planarian that's moving around, and that's him being cut. It's cut in two. And there's one part, and there's the tail part. And you can see both parts are still kind of alive. A little further along, this is a day after the amputation, and we're starting to see a little bit of a change at the end. Three days after amputation, we can start seeing a little something going on here where it's starting to regrow the head. So the tail is starting to develop a head. That was the tail, and I see the tail has got its own head. And that was the head, and it's regrowing itself in the tail. So it's about four days after you amputated it, and you can see the tail is growing back nicely. So once again, this is considered asexual reproduction because one organism recreated copies of itself all by itself. The last type of asexual reproduction we're going to talk about is called vegetative propagation. And a lot of you guys know this as plant cuttings. What you can do with a plant is if you take a plant and you just cut part of the stem off and then take this piece, stick it in water, Eventually, it'll start growing roots. And then we can cut another piece off and another piece off. And we're using the exact same plant, so it's going to regrow the exact same type of plant with the exact same DNA. And what you can see here from this Google search page, there's a couple of different types of vegetative propagation. There's actually a whole bunch of different types. One of them is what we showed you before. You take a plant, you cut part of the plant off, you stick that in water for a while, it starts to develop roots, put it in the ground, and it starts growing again. We have created two plants from one plant, asexual reproduction. 
there's another type you might have seen these types of plants where the plants growing and then this little offshoot comes off and kind of lays on the ground and once this lays on the ground it starts producing roots and starts producing another plant so there's lots of ways that organisms can undergo asexual reproduction but sometimes organisms need to undergo sexual reproduction and the difference here is that now there's two parents and each parent is going to contribute half of the genetic information half of the chromosomes come from mom half of the chromosomes come from dad and what happens in sexual reproduction is two different cells come together and merge as one one from mom one from dad taking half of the genetic material from each and they come together and because it's a mix of half mom and half dad the offspring are no longer going to be identical to the parents so sexual reproduction requires two parents and the offspring are not going to be identical in this case now that leads to a process known as meiosis this is kind of a picture of what we're going to be going into in the very near future talking about how we create cells that have half the amount of dna so what's the big difference between sexual and asexual reproduction well first off an asexual reproduction has some advantages number one you can make more offspring number two it's much faster asexual reproduction occurs generally much faster than sexual reproduction and you only have one parent so there's no need to find a mate there's no need to look for someone else one organism can reproduce itself so that all sounds great and it even requires less energy so what's the problem well it turns out one problem is all the offspring are going to be identical there's going to be no genetic variation and in later lectures we're going to see that genetic variation ensures the survival of the species if everybody's exactly the same then one incident can wipe out the entire population so that's a big disadvantage for asexual reproduction everybody comes out exactly the same sexual reproduction you can probably guess what the disadvantages and advantages are here the big advantage of course is all the offspring are going to be slightly different they're all going to be a mix of traits and again when we get into evolution and natural selection you're going to see how variation ensures various species can survive your organism is basically more protected it's less likely to go extinct if you've got slight variations of the same organism here's a disadvantage it requires two organisms here's the disadvantages number one you have to have two organisms so typically it's male and female one male has to find one female that's going to take some time it requires a lot more energy you have to produce the uh, beginning cells and then the cells have to come together it takes more time and once you create the offspring it takes even more time for the offspring to develop so there's advantages and disadvantages to each one of these things so what this means for organisms that undergo sexual reproduction is they typically have two different types of cells one's called the somatic cells and the other are called the germ cells or the gametes somatic cells are the body cells these are most of the cells of your body and these guys undergo mitosis they start off with so many chromosomes they end up with the exact same number of chromosomes and those chromosomes are actually two copies of each chromosome one from mom and one from dad so if there's 10 different chromosomes then you've got 10 from mom 10 from dad you would have 20 chromosomes in your body as you know humans have 46 chromosomes 23 from mom and 23 from dad that is what's called the 2n number 23 and 23 total up to 46. this is referred to as the diploid number di meaning two 
So you have two copies of each chromosome, diploid cell. This is most of our cells. Some of our cells, however, are what are called germ cells that turn into gametes. These are the sex cells. These are the sperm and egg cells. These cells are created through meiosis. So germ cells undergo meiosis to create gametes, sperm and egg cells. Well, now in meiosis, what happens is you start off having the diploid number of chromosomes, but by the time you get done with meiosis, as you're going to see in our next lecture, you end up with only one copy of each chromosome. You either end up with mom's chromosome or dad's chromosome, so you only have n number of chromosomes. So in human beings, each sperm cell or egg cell only contain 23 chromosomes instead of the normal 46. And this is because when the sperm cell, 23, gets together with the egg cell, 23, that gets us back to our total of 46. But these sex cells that only contain one copy of each chromosome, that have half the number of chromosomes, are called haploid cells. Haploid meaning half the number of chromosomes as other cells. The last definition we need to know is what are called homologous chromosomes. We've actually talked about these before, but we've never actually used this term. Homologous chromosomes are two chromosomes that have the same genes on them. In other words, they're two chromosomes that carry the same traits. They're similar to each other, but they're not exact. And what I mean by that is since you get one chromosome from mom and one chromosome from dad, they're not going to have the exact same information. If we're talking about hair color or eye color or various other traits, mom's chromosome is going to be a little bit different from dad's, even though they code for the same sorts of things. And you've seen this before when we've lined up chromosomes. Now these are, remember, your sister, chroma, sister chromatids. There's sister chromatids, there's sister chromatids. So there's dad's B chromosome. There's mom's B chromosome. Codes for the same traits, but slightly different. And there's dad's E chromosome and mom's E chromosome. So homologous chromosomes are going to be kind of important when we talk about meiosis. They're the same chromosomes with slightly different information because one came from one parent and one came from the other.